Welcome to another episode of Moments with Mike as we continue our devotional study in the book of 1 Thessalonians. And this week we'll be spending our time in the fourth chapter. When I was much younger in the faith, I had one person come to me and say that there were two great themes in Scripture. The way to God, that is how we approach God, and our walk with God. In this particular chapter, the word walk is very prominent. And we're going to see at least three different places in chapter 4 that illustrate for us how God wants us to walk as members of the household of faith. But there is also the will of God mentioned in this chapter, specifically in verse 3, that it is the will of God that we abstain from all forms of sexual morality, which is all sexual activity outside the bonds of marriage. That is the preceptive will of God, or the revealed will of God, as theologians call it. But we also have the hidden or the secret will of God, seen for us in Deuteronomy 29 and verse 29, where it says that the secret things belong to God and he chooses not to reveal them to men. Or in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 11, where God is said to have a purpose and he works all things after the counsel of his will. We see the result of that only in the outworking of human history or sometimes because it pleases God to send a prophetic word to his community. But in any event, both the will of God and the walk of faith are very prominent here in this fourth chapter. In verses 1 through 8, we're clearly told that the will of God for us is to know how to possess our own body, verse 4, in honor, and not in a way that is degrading, such as what was going on in the culture around them, at least in the manner of sexuality. Marital infidelity in that time was common. It was not unexpected for a man to only raise up children with his wife, but have most of his sexual activity center around the prostitution of that time. In fact, one historian once said that one of the greatest virtues that the early church brought into the culture surrounding it was this idea of marital fidelity and the high view that the church began to announce to the community as to the institution of marriage. In verses 9 through 12, We see that Paul talks about making it our ambition to work with our own hands and to mind our own business and to live a quiet life, which is a way in which our walk with God is reflected in the greater culture around us. And then in the final paragraph of chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, we talk about the return of the Lord Jesus Christ in the clouds to receive those who are living and to go with him to be with him forever in heaven And there is this note that ends chapter 4 and verse 18 that we're to encourage one another, not only with the promise of Christ's coming, but the certainty that we will be with him forever in heaven. I want to leave you with this thought, though, as we take a look at these first eight verses of Thessalonians 4. I'm fascinated by the word walk and why it was chosen to be so reflective of the life that you and I live before God. I see one of the first places in Scripture that the word is used is in Genesis chapter 5, where it says of Enoch that he walked with God and God called him and he was no more. Our walk is to be progressive. Our walk is that which is normative of human activity. But our walk is also considered to be that which approaches a goal that you and I walk to a place because there is something there or someone there that we need to meet or something that we need to do. Our goal throughout life is to learn more and more, not only how to love God and love one another, but how to walk in a way that's pleasing to our Father and brings blessing to others. I look forward to seeing you again soon. God bless.